Good evening for the Sart Digital Church. Good evening, facilitators. Welcome to this call. It's an absolute privilege serving you tonight. And as we wait for people to get online, I see Barbara was the first one in the chat box to say good evening. Good evening, Barbara. Good evening, family and friends. Thank you, Val, for allowing the people into the room. It's always easy when there's someone to do the admin. And uh, how did you like that teaching tonight by Dr. Frost? And um, if there's any teaching that will encourage you to get the book, to get the actual book, um, it's this teaching, just purely because of the magnitude of the names of Jesus Christ, the magnitude of the names of Christ. And um, you and I have to start using those names in the way that we that we pray. We have to start using those names, those descriptors, because it's descriptive. Um, and we have to use those descriptives as we, we pray, as we talk into situations. We need to use those powerful names of Jesus, those powerful names that you and I can understand. It's not in Hebrew. It's not in Greek. It's in common English or in Afrikaans. And the key is that you and I can understand it. We, we brought up Afrikaans or we brought up English and we understand the Afrikaans and the English word. And it's imperative that we go and understand these descriptors with regards to Jesus Christ. But um, tonight, it's a, all about facilitate the training. So I'm not here to redo the teaching. And maybe I should not have pressed that button, but this one rather. Um, tonight, tonight, it's Home Fellowship Facilitator Training. And yes, we are on lesson number 37 already. And uh, tonight, we talk about your testimony. Tonight, we talk about your testimony. It's important for you and I, dear facilitator, it's important for you and I to go look at our own testimony, to go revisit <clears throat> our own testimony. And why do I talk about testimony tonight? I'm glad you asked, um, because the, this teaching of tonight, where we go look at the names of Christ, are always a teaching. Whenever I go search for the names of God, the names of Christ, it always rings me. It always takes me to my testimony. And um, you and I need to go and find our testimony. And we need to go find those descriptives of who our Lord and Savior, our provider is. And we need to go bolt that into our testimony. So that's why I want to talk about um, your testimony tonight. And to kick off this uh, meeting, I would like to read us a scripture. And I'm only going to read three verses. But I would like you to go read a little bit more. And uh, tonight we are in Acts. And uh, we are in Acts 13. And I would like you to go read from verse 13. So please, someone type in the chat box, Acts 13, verse 13 onwards. And um, I would like to encourage you. And I know Dr. Frost has given you homework in the teaching tonight um, that you have to go and uh, go do a specific function and a specific job. Tonight, and I don't want to deviate from that. I want to add on to that. So I've seen the plans and I want to add on to those plans. And um, let's go and um, go add to those plans. And I would like to encourage you tonight to go revisit your testimony and go revisit your testimony with regards to those names that you've just seen of Jesus Christ. And uh, for, for that purpose, I have prepared us um, just. Uh, three verses out of Acts 13, out of Acts 13, and um, I would like you to read from verse 13. Thank you, Marine. I've seen that you've typed um, in there, Acts 13, verse 13, and further on, I'm just going to read from verse 21. So um, allow me to just go read from verse 21. Then they asked for a king, and this is, if you go read Acts 13, from verse 13 onwards, my understanding of it my interpretation of it this is a testimony this is telling us how to testify this is a testimony and um acts 13 um from verse 13 onwards it's all about um uh, apostle paul and uh, uh john has left him and he's now talking and he's telling them giving them a testimony of where god is coming from with this nation with them and uh, this is just a little fragment of this. And um, I would like you to go read that um, uh, Acts 13, 13 onwards. 
with the view before you start reading it, see it as testimony and go read it as testimony. And you will see that you actually read it differently. And um, I struggled with, with people with testimonies years and years ago. And I've, I've shared it with you before. Um, I, was, I was very good at knowing what everybody done. And I was very good at interpreting what everyone meant. And I was very good at interpreting the facts. And um, if someone told me a testimony, I would go to other people and go share that testimony because I was so excited for them. I will share their testimony and uh, share it with other people. And um, God then just grabbed hold of me and said, but you should stop that. Never, ever share someone else's testimony who's still alive, who's still in your community, who's still in your, in your inner circle. Never share their testimony. Allow them the opportunity to be the first person to share their testimony. Don't go in your small home fellowship group. If someone shares a testimony with you and whether you're the facilitator or just a member of the group, don't go share that testimony with any other person in the group. Just go, don't go tell them. Allow that person to come and tell them. And I know I shared this before. And uh, God showed that to me when someone shared a serious portion of his testimony um, with me and um, he was so excited with sharing it with me one-on-one. -on -one. I left that meeting. I've gone and I've seen people in our home fellowship um, and I said to them or, or shared this exciting testimony of this friend, um, this fellow believer with him. And that night in the home fellowship, as that person walked into, everyone was there already. And when that person walked into the home fellowship and started sharing his testimony with glee and with, with uh, excitement, and uh, he just started sharing it. And, and as he looked someone in the eye, they said, no, we know. He told us. And I could just see his face disappear. His, his, his total demeanor changed. And God had to work with me and said, you know what? That's like gossip. That's like Skinner. That's like telling stories. Never, ever, ever, ever share someone else's testimony if they're still alive. If they're still around you. If you can use someone's testimony to help and assist someone else. It's cool, but it's not go share the testimony of someone that's still around, that's still going to see the people that you're busy with because you're stealing from them the power of what Christ has done for them. And in that, in that vein, I would like us to go and read um, Acts 13, and I'm just going to read three verses, as I said, for tonight, purely for time, but I would like you to go and read the whole Acts 13 from verse 13 onwards with the view of a testimony. And they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. So he's busy telling a story. Remember, he's telling a story. He's telling to them, he's giving to them a recount of what God has done. What's a testimony? A testimony is a recount of what God has done, how God has supernaturally pro sorry, provided, healed, um, been there, uh, been the beacon for you. And in verse 22, and when he had removed him, that's now Saul, he raised up David to be the king. Of him, he testified and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, conforming to my will and purposes, who will do all my will. Now he's talking as if he's God. This is what God said about David. Now, I would love to have a testimony like that from God's mouth with my name in there. I would love to have that testimony from God's mouth with my name in there. I don't know how you feel about that. But verse 23, from this man's descendants, God has brought to Israel a savior in the person of Jesus, according to his promise. Now, why do I use this when I go and look at the at testimony? It's imperative for you and I, beloved brother, sister, facilitator, um, assisting and helping people in our home fellowships. It's imperative that we regularly, regularly just have the opportunity for people to share their testimony, to see how people's testimony grow in a home fellowship because you're a close group and you pray for one another and you see something happen in someone's life, you see something happen 
it's amazing to grow with them and to see how their testimony grow as they grow in the word, as they grow in Christ, as they grow in their understanding of who their provider, their father is. And it's, it's fantastic to see how people grow. But we need to give opportunity for people to share their testimonies. But we have to help the people in our home fellowship. We have to help them to have a safe space to come in and share their testimony so that they get used to sharing their testimony, so that they hear it for the first time in the, audibly. Because you can go and prepare your testimony as good as you want, as best as you like. You can go write it. You can go say it to yourself a million times. You can know it off by heart. You will be able to say it back to front, front to back in your sleep. It doesn't help unless you hear it. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And for you and I, our testimony should be something that we hear. I should hear it while I share it with someone else. That's why we are a community. That's why God is interested in you in the community. That's why God has given you brothers and sisters, so that you can hear your testimony as you have the opportunity to listen to it, as they hear it as well with you. Because hearing it, it sounds different then preparing it, then thinking about it, that praying about it, reminiscing about it, writing it down, whatever you do, hearing it is different. Now, in a home fellowship, we have to encourage people to share their testimony. We have to encourage people to share with what God has done for them, where they are now and where they will be because of what God has done. So a testimony is actually essentially three parts. And if you go look at a testimony, it's always three parts. Now, unfortunately, I had to sit through many a testimony where people did not understand the three elements of a testimony. And they only spent time on the first part, on the first element. But the first element should be the lowest weight. There's three parts, three elements, three parts to a testimony. My interpretation of that. And um, there's three elements to it. And I go look at the word and I go look at what happened in scripture and I go find what the testimony should be from that. And there are different examples. I've just used one, which most people never see as a testimony. But um, I see that as part of it. But a lot of people go and create their testimony. And when they share their testimony, they emphasize one of the three elements. But there are three elements. And the first element is not the heaviest element. The first element should be very concise, should be precise, should be a little, just put you in the picture. And the first element is, and I'm glad you asked what that could possibly be. My first element of my testimony is yesterday. Where do I come from? What have I done? Where, where do I come from? What's my story? What, what is my yesterday? Because every one of us has got a past. But the problem is a lot of people spend so much time having to give you so much detail about their past. You can hear while they're giving you that testimony, they're actually still encamping that past. They're still sitting at their eye. They're still sitting at their failure. They still haven't forgiven. They still haven't dealt with it. And the key is when we hear someone's testimony, we will, if we allow the Holy Spirit to help us, we will hear when people are still at that place. It's not a testimony yet. They're still getting out of it. But they have a testimony because God has done something. But they still dwell too long in the past. Every one of us has got elements in the past. And we can go and sit and see who has got the worst element. And sorry, I just need to to gather my thoughts about this one because it, it's getting serious to me. It's getting, it's getting very personal. If I go sit and I, I have the opportunity to discuss a testimony, someone sharing with us their past, and um, sometimes people want to tell you a lot about their yesterday. Sometimes people want to because they've never dealt with it they still in sharing that testimony with you because of your position. And in home fellowship, it sometimes happens that you as the facilitator, you are the person that they see in that position with whom they should deal with it. 
And the number one key is just be quiet. Just be quiet. Don't. You can lean in. You can be part of it, but be mostly quiet. Just sit and allow them to hear what they say, because for a lot of them, it will be the first time that they actually hear that past because they never shared it with someone else. And we need to hear that. And as they hear that, they actually realize that they haven't dealt with it. They, they still busy there. They still in that place. And some people will just spend too much time in yesterday when sharing their testimony. It's not important. I had to in the past, in 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 the past, I had one or two times I had the privilege to hear from the Holy Spirit what to go say to someone who has got the mic, who's on the platform, who is the person that's doing this word, that's bringing this word, but they in their testimony that they use in their testimony, the what they use, the level of fact, the level of detail is not cool for the people in the room because there's people that they know who are part of that level of fact. There's people who's impacted by that level of fact. And it's imperative that we hear, just allow to hear that so that you can, once you start talking to the person, you can just ask them about those, those areas and ask them uh, what is it that they're still working on? What is it in that area that they're still busy with? So that next time they share their testimony, they can cut that down to a little less. I'm so glad you shared that with me. I'm so glad you share that with me to that extent, to that level. But brother, our sister, I will encourage you. Well, I, I never I never sit with sisters that I have to tell them that. Um, my wife worked with the girls. And uh, sometimes we will be in a position where we, where we together sit with a lady and she will share with my wife and my, me together but my wife will do this i will not uh, i will not say this to this effect i work with the men i'm safe with them i understand them i'm one of them i've been there i've done that so um, i work with the, with the men and sometimes i have to say to them brother in this testimony and we we break it down and i deal and i help with those areas and then I say, next time when you share your testimony, do you think it will be wise to share this, to continue sharing this, to allow you to go back to that, to allow you to go share that? And it's wise to sometimes just think about that and just go less into yesterday because it's important that people understand. But people don't have to know everything. There's a lot of stuff in my testimony that shaped me there's a lot of stuff in my testimony that shaped me, but people don't know that. Uh, a lot of stuff in my testimony that truly shaped who I am today before you, that shaped me in my relationship before God. But it's not something that I sit and share and talk about every day because people will just see that next time that they see me. People will see that. And um, it's imperative that we don't go there. I, I had the very privileged life in that I found God very early in my life. I had an encounter with him in, in either grade two or standard one. Um, I know half of you don't know what I mean I meant by standard one, but grade two or grade three. I, I don't know. I had a discussion with my sister the other day about that again. And um, but my dad wasn't happy with that because it was not the same church that what we were in. And um, I had a hiding for going to that church that night. I can remember going out and, and kneeling and giving my life to the Lord. But because of the hiding and because of the church that we were in, it wasn't friend of mind. But I always tried. I always tried when someone was unfair with someone else, I would step in if the guys were not nice with a teacher i will i will step in and, and help and assist i could not stand it um because i tried to to do the right thing and i've always been in in leadership in in church because we gone to church uh regularly in our house and um 
but we didn't have relationship. It wasn't about relationship. It was about doing church. And the, the key is, in there, there are a lot of things that protected me. A lot of things that other people have done that I did not do. Um, a lot of things that the, my friends have done, which I did not participate in. Because I didn't felt that it was right before God if I should do that. But I wasn't the same. I was still a, a, a young man. But as I've grown up, as I started getting to understand my testimony, as I gave my life to the Lord, um, which I did not think I needed at that stage to do. I really, on that day, I was never, ever, ever thought that I will be led to Christ in in an amazing way that I never thought was possible because I wasn't exposed to that. And um, you all know, 16 March 1989, Neville Norton led me to the Lord at my place of work where I got him to come and, and teach the people because they were sinners. They had to get to know the Lord. And um, that's, how, that's our lives. But that is a small part of my testimony. It is not my testimony in total. I don't go add in the detail. Um, I, have, I have stuff in there that happened to us as a family that I can really get attention of a lot of people. But that's not important. Because that I don't need that to define me. The key is when I do my testimony, I have to go find where I was, give people a short. Why did I need God? My yesterday, why did I need God? I was lost. I was searching for this. I a short testimony yesterday. But then I get to today. That's the part of the testimony that you should spend a little bit of time on today. Where am I today? Because my testimony is on that day. Yesterday, that happened. On that day, I committed my life to Christ. That's what happened. I've grown. But today, and then, and a lot of time when I talk to people and when people share a testimony, they don't say too much. Where that yesterday, where that turnaround that came brought me today. Because I need to tell you where I am, who I am in Christ today. And that's where I need those titles, those names of Jesus Christ that we just looked at tonight, teaching number 84. That's where I need that. So I would like to encourage you, and I know you've got homework from Dr. Frost, but I would like to encourage you to go and find the names of Jesus Christ. Go find the names of Jesus Christ that describe where you are with him today. Because for every one of us, yes, Flora, for you too, for every one of us, the names of Jesus Christ is something different to every one of us. The names of Jesus Christ for every one of us mean something different in where you are today. And that's my encouragement. Go find in your testimony. Go find your yesterday. Why did you need Christ? Go find you got to Christ. Go find you today. What defines Christ in your life today? What are these descriptive words of Jesus Christ? These names defining your relationship with him. Which are those words? Go find five, seven of them. Seven is a good number so that you can forget to and still have five, still have grace. Go find five names of Jesus Christ. And in your today, you go use that as why I am in Christ today. Because of who he is and what is the descriptors of him. Because I need to go to tomorrow. And too many a time when people share their testimony, it's everything about yesterday and gory detail about yesterday. Detail about yesterday that defines them. For a lot of people who are not already fully in Christ because they still sit a little bit with the religious spirit. They still sit and, and look at people through the religious spirit and they still think, you know what, this is making you so much different. This is what that what happened makes you different today than, than what I thought you are. Because someone with the religious spirit will struggle to get to your today when you tell them the stuff. And the key is to go find the yesterday, to go find today. And in today, use the name of Christ. In today, go find those, those banners that you can raise over your life. Which of those banners, which of those 
titles, which of those names of Jesus Christ are the banners that purely describe your relationship with Christ today? Which are the ones that you can go take out there and say, Lord, because I promise you, if I go look at the people on the school, and I have Anne and uh, Eric and Karen and Francois and Keith and Vivian, Peter, Rihanna, Martha, uh, Teresa, just to use the name Adam, to use a name or two, um, every one of you will have different names of Christ as the banner over where you are today. Have you ever thought of that? To use the descriptors, the name of Jesus Christ, the names of Jesus Christ as banners in your today. Because that's part of a testimony. That is part of a testimony. Because a testimony has got three elements. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And today, because of these banners, because of this, because of this name of Christ, my tomorrow will be different. My tomorrow, I will this because I will stand on this banner of who he is. It's not about me. I will stand on the banner of who he is. Because for a lot of people, unfortunately, when they share their testimony, we have to go look at, but where is Jesus to be found? If I share a testimony, Jesus should be in my testimony. My today should be about him. Maybe my yesterday was about what someone else has done, what I've done, what I've missed. What so For a lot of people, their testimony of yesterday is someone else. It's not themselves. For a lot of people, because it was influence of people on their lives that had them where they were. But then the victory, I found Jesus Christ. I found that name, that name that's the banner above all names for you of Jesus Christ. Go find them. Go find them where you are today. Which of those are the banners that you can raise over your life for today? And then, which are the banners that will define your future? Which are the banners that will say where you go? So if I have three minutes to do my testimony, 30 seconds should be about yesterday. Yes, you heard me right. Three minutes, 30 seconds should be about yesterday. One minute should be about today. And one minute and a half should be about him in tomorrow. Raising the banner of Jesus Christ. We cannot allow people to have a testimony, but Jesus is not to be found in it. How will he change your tomorrow in Christ? That's a testimony. How will he change your tomorrow because of Jesus Christ? Because of God in my life? Because of what happened? Because every one of us has got something. If I go tell that to the world, they will look different at you as a person. And for a lot of us, it's something external that worked out into your life. Something that happened externally into your life. For some of us, it was decisions that we've taken. In error, we're sorry about that. For some of us, we're sorry about the position that we put ourselves in. For some of us, we're sorry for the fact that we did not recognize Jesus Christ in our lives at the time that we should have, but only later. For some of us, is that we allowed things to happen. For some of us, and it doesn't matter, brother, sister, beloved, it does not matter what your yesterday is. What matters is what your today is. It doesn't matter on which day you've given your heart, your heart to Christ. Whether you have a date that is 100 years ago. Or whether you have a date that's this morning. The only thing that matters is that I found Christ. And that I have a future in him. That all of a sudden I have a future. And in home fellowship it's imperative that we help. The people in our care, because that's who they are, those in the home fellowship with you, the people in your care, the people that, that God allows you to have an influence in. It's imperative that we just help each other to go and look at our testimony. 
But sometimes it's imperative for you as the facilitator to just go spend time with someone in the home fellowship for them to hear the past, to deal with it for once and for all. Never, ever, ever for you to share that with any person. In, in our house, because of what Christ had to teach me, what I had, the mistakes that I made, because of what I had to learn. In our house, if you tell me things, but it's personal and I know you're going to talk to my wife, I know you're going to see her again, I will not share that news with her. You will share that news with her and that will definitely be the first time that she hears it. You will not, when you share it with her, see that she's now faking that, oh, it's news. It's You will not find it because I would not have told her. I can guarantee you that because of grace. Because for me, that was part of my yesterday that I had to go and change in my who I am for him. And the key is we need to go find one another in our testimony. We need to get to a point in our home fellowship where we will be able to share our testimony. And it will, in a three-minute testimony, it will come down to 30 seconds of our past because that's not important. I just say something. I don't tell you the whole story. I don't want you to define me from now on to the detail to what I've told you my past. I want you to go find Christ in my testimony. I want you to go find Christ in my future. I want you to go find hope in today and in tomorrow because that's what a testimony is about. It's the opportunity to share the gospel with someone else. The testimony is an opportunity to say what happened, where he brought you today in Christ and where Christ is taking you for tomorrow because we have to plan for tomorrow. It is part of who we are. God will provide for tomorrow, but we are busy going forward, living a life, planning where we're going to share his gospel, who we will have the opportunity to share it with. I trust tonight that you've seen my total different angle on the teaching for the evening, the names of Christ, that you go find and build that, go find the names of Christ as the banner in your life, where you come from, where you are today, and where you're going for tomorrow so that that becomes part of your testimony so that people in your testimony find Christ and not in your testimony dwell on whether you actually ever got uh, saved from got released from got free from what you just told them your testimony is because I promise you every one of us has got something in our testimony that there will be someone out there that will be shocked and the key is that's not the reason for a testimony. The reason for a testimony is to tell someone what Jesus Christ has done for me and what he will allow me to do for him by his grace tomorrow. It was an absolute privilege sharing this personal um, teaching with you tonight. But as a facilitator, I will really, really, I, <laughs> I would encourage you to spend time to just be quiet Allow the people to talk. Allow people to, to share with you their testimonies. Go find Christ in it. Go find what defines the, the value of Christ in their testimony. Because that's the easiest way to go see where someone is in their, in their walk with Christ. Where they are on their way to. Because yesterday is a lot less important than today. Where I am in Christ. And where I'm going with him tomorrow. It was an absolute privilege sharing this with you and uh, talking to you tonight. Thank you for being on this call. Lord, I just come and I want to bless every brother and sister, every facilitator, every person that make time for someone else. Lord, every person on this call, whether they facilitators or not, listening to the recording, but every person just allowing someone else to share their testimony. Lord, I honor that. And I can honor every person who has the opportunity to share a testimony and may, makes it about Christ and show where Christ has changed their life forever and how Christ will impact their future. I bless everyone in the sound of my voice to go forth and spread the gospel, spread the good news, all in Jesus' name. Amen. It was a privilege sharing with you tonight. Thank you to everyone saying good night in the chat box. 
and uh, have a good evening have a good week i bless you all bye bye